Bonsoir tout le monde, nous content et avec vous et jeudi hein, pour capable continuer de parler ça ensemble avec vous. Nous t'ai déjà annoncé ça et nous t'ai gagné pour nous parler ensemble avec et ambassadeur Daniel Fout lui-même qui est connu là donc presque tout haïtien et habitué avec ambassadeur Daniel Fout. D'ailleurs, faut que nous dit c'est mouvement donc jeudi en gagné et quant à Ariel Henry, si nous capable de dire qu'on s'en niveau communauté internationale là commencer en quelque sorte avec ambassadeur Daniel Foot non et l'élite démissionné donc et depuis et en 2001 et je dis hein, c'est presque toute salle te prévoit qui t'a privé Haïti si pas de gain disposition qui prend c'est eux même qui fait et il est très sollicité je dis hein, ambassadeur Foot les mêmes qui déjà parlé ensemble avec plusieurs médias américains qui a sollicité le par rapport avec prédiction et décision le prend et nous gagnons un privilège pour nous gagner ambassadeur jeudi encore. Ambassadeur Foot, et bonsoir, comment vous êtes? Bonsoir, papi mal, et vous-même? Eh bien, nous très bien. Uh, we are glad to have you. We know your Haitian Creole is not the, the best yet, but <laughs> no, you're coming. Yet. You're I'm coming. still working on it. And you're still working on it. Uh, tell us, uh, what do you think about the... Uh, recent development of the situation in, in Haiti, basically everything you you predicted a couple of years ago. Well, I, I think it's an, it was inevitable, although it, it's not over yet. And, and I'm not sure what's going to happen here. But it, when I was special envoy and when I was first in Haiti, I was talking to mes amis and all my Haitian friends. It was pretty clear that uh Ariel Henry as a core group anointee was not going to be able to hold successful elections and we know what happens in Haiti when a leader doesn't lead after a while he gets stale and we get where we're at now so I'm not surprised at all I'm shocked that it took this long and that it took the international community this long to see that they had a problem But I would not be surprised if, as we speak, the United States is still trying to come up with some partner in Haiti where Ariel's finance minister or somebody, because the U.S. just seems as if it cannot not have a partner in Haiti. So I'm concerned they're still going to try to do something silly, or they may try to get Ariel back there. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Uh, the Miami Herald uh, reported last night that, uh, the, on this morning, that the uh, State Department, the U.S. government, asked Mr. Henry to resign. And today we we heard Matt Miller, uh, the uh, spokesperson for the State Department, including a uh, spokesperson for White House. Neither of them confirmed they, uh, they asked our Prime Minister to resign. But they did not deny it. How do you understand? Do you have any some kind of information about uh, what's going on there? Blah 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 blah. That's what you're hearing from the spokespeople. Um, I, I heard from the our ambassador, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas Greenfield, and she said something like, "Oh, we didn't ask him to resign, but we're pushing him." towards naming a transition government. And what they don't understand is Ariel's not in charge. At this point, he's gone. He's not in charge of Haiti. And I don't think they're going to let him back in in the airport, to tell you the truth, from the looks of things. So so why don't, do you think, first, uh, the Dominican Republic refused to let him land and uh based on international law he should not have any problem to land especially because he's coming back to his country and some people say abinader could not take this bold step on its own there should be something behind and when he landed in puerto rico uh it seems like he was in the, the, the fbi Uh, took him in charge so he was not like any regular guest how how do you is it uh typical for the fbi to to do that or do you think something is going on um it's not typical for the fbi to do that except with heads of state so he's considered a head of state so it's normal that the fbi in puerto rico would go to the airport and offer him protection while he's on the ground and in Puerto Rico. So that in itself isn't anything odd. 
I believe President Abinader in the Dominican Republic is sick of Ariel Henry. Ariel Henry has caused nothing but problems for Abinader politically because he hasn't done anything to address the, the many crises currently in Haiti. So I think Abinader just wants Henri to leave like everybody else on that. So, so first, tell me, how do you understand Ariel and we decided to go to Kenya to talk to William Uto? It seems like he didn't have any authorization to engage in any kind of uh, talk to uh, William Uto on his, on his own and that uh, make them like the international community mad. Um. That might be part of it, right? Because he was trying. Look, Ariel knows that if he doesn't get help, or knew if he doesn't get help, he's done. And he knows when he's done, he might have to face justice in the assassination. So it's pretty important for him to stay in power. Um, I, I don't think that people were pleased that he went to Kenya. But I think it was a stupid error by a stupid man. February 7th came and went. And this was the third year in a row that Ariel said he was going to do something and he did nothing. And the population has had it. So as soon as he left, they were like, you know what? This is our chance. Let's just shut it down. And that's what's happened. It's gone from protest to revolution. And if they try to force Ariel back, I believe he'll be killed. And uh, if, and and I believe at some point he should stand justice in Haiti. So, uh, so do you think uh, the gang members like barbecue and other gang they had the power to prevent Ariel Henry from coming, or the international community just sees on that and uh, no, it's it's the it's it's not just the gangs; it's Haiti, it's the Haitian. So it's the elites, it's the gangs, it's the FAD, it's Moïse Jean Charles and Guy Philippe, it's uh, it's almost everybody over there doesn't want him back. So what's the easy way? Make it so no one can fly into the airport. Right. So so they've done that and it's been and, and now the US realizes they got a big problem on their hand. And, but but and, the, the US uh in that regard, they don't want to offer him any plan to come back. Zelensky, when he came to uh the United States, the US gave him accommodation to send him back despite the war ongoing war with right. Russia. So it's more dangerous, like there is Walker, there is all of these bombs. And they could have done the same for Ariel and we if they wanted him to, to oh, go. Oh, they still to can, work. but I think they realize there's no popular support there. What we've been saying for two and a half years, the guy has no legitimacy, no support, and he's screwed up. He hasn't done anything. He didn't tell us why he was talking to Badio the night of the assassination. He didn't do anything to battle the gangs and improve security. He wasted his chance. So you you think uh, the U.S., the way they are speaking right now, it seems like they are trying to get any another member of the Ariel government. As a prime minister, maybe they might get uh, someone from the Montana group as president or a council of president, Milad Baniga. Uh, and what should be, what do you think the position of the CARICOM would be? Because the CARICOM is very involved. It seems like you are understanding. If you look at, at CARICOM came out today and I sent them a message because I know some of their leadership well. And I sent them a message and they came out today and said, Ariel Henry shouldn't announce a new government. The CARICOM shouldn't announce a new government. The UN shouldn't announce a new government. Haitians need to announce a new government from Haiti, right? And so that's CARICOM's current position, which agrees with me. I think the U.S. is still scrambling and flailing tonight to try and figure out what to do. I believe that they would love to have a partner from the current administration in power, but the current administration's not in charge. 
their yeah, job. Yeah, but how how can they do that in Haiti? The gang members they they want some kind of amnesty. They don't say that uh, directly. So anyone that is coming right now would have to engage in some kind of talk to barbecue and is uh, absolutely and, and it's not going to be easy so either haitian leaders need to step up and do it or you guys need to bring me down there because the gangs and guy philippe and moi jean charles i think a lot of them do want what's best for haiti but some of the gangs leaders are going to have to be accountable at some point in time. And the rest of the gang leaders were going to have to demobilize and get their weapons and give them something to do with their time. So it's a complex problem. It's not an unsolvable problem. But by waiting so long, by ignoring the issue, and by the international community just blindly backing Ariel Henry, now the gangs and the, the ex-FOD and and are in charge of Haiti. And we got to work through that somehow. And I hope it's via Haitian leaders. So Montana is there, uh, except nobody in Montana is going to be the president or the temporary prime minister or something. They That's just a concept, I think. So some leader in Haiti, we probably don't even know who it is now, needs to step up and push this forward. Yeah, but the thing is, everybody... The U.S. make the mess, and it seems like everybody is waiting for the United States to say because no, nobody wants to, you know, take charge. And right. U.S. come and messed up everything at, again. At this point, if you guys don't take charge, you'll never take charge. This is the chance to finally win Haitian independence. And I understand it's scary, and the gangs are killing people and stuff like that. Desaline and Louverture and all those guys were scared too. And Haiti has never fully won its independence because the white people still don't let you guys do what you want to do because we feel the need to control you. And it's stupid. And now is the time where you guys got to rise up and you're not going to go to war with the United States, but if you don't stick up for your sovereignty now, they're going to put another PhD guy in there. They're going to hold elections in 12 months and it's just going to be the same crap. Nobody's going to trust the government. The government's not going to do anything and there will be no social contract between the people and the government. That's what's always been lacking in Haiti. And it's So, so yeah. have you been in Haiti right now? Uh, where would you start giving the current situation Situation with gang members down the street, a lot of people have been killing. Uh, opposition is not like they don't; they are not all set on what they really want. Uh, Guy Philippe is asking for, yeah, but we don't know what Guy Philippe is asking for. Moïse Jean Charles is asking for a council of president, but Moïse Jean Charles has been backing Ariel and we for so long, uh, and no, now he has no credibility, as we all know. So where would you start if uh, had you been in Haiti right now? Okay, where would you start the process? So let's say, let's say I'm named as a mediator, okay, and I go into Haiti. Where I would start is I would just meet the powers that be, okay. I'd meet the political guys. I'd meet the civil society guys. I'd meet the gang guys, okay. If if Haitians want me to, right? This is not the Haitian population needs to empower whoever does this to go meet the gangs because the gangs haven't been very helpful in this. Okay, but they need to be talked to. And I think there's a solution there somewhere, but it's going to take somebody with a lot of guts who's very brave and is willing to sacrifice for the future. Hey, really Would you do. say that at this time we need some Thomas Sankara, some um, Burkina Bay style leader uh, that would make the case better for Haiti right now? Yeah. I mean, you need your George Washington. You need another two cent lower too. But we need to finish the job this time and say, this is the Haitian government. It's ours. This is how we're going to run it. And we will accept all of your assistance and help in getting better. But we're going to do it our way. So you, you spoke to a lot of people in Haiti. You walked a very long time. Have you seen any kind of leader from what we have right now that could uh, play this role? 
Yes, yes, I am. Uh, but I'm not sure they want to, and I'm not sure conditions will permit them to. But there are a number of good leaders in Haiti. The problem for me is I only know the old ones because I developed my relationships there 12, 14 years ago. It's the new ones that need to step up. Nobody wants a 70-year-old former senator leading the freaking country. It needs to be somebody young with a vision for an independent Haiti that sets its own course forward. So, so uh, surprisingly, uh, the Western Hemisphere from the State Department by Nichols haven't said much about what is going on right now. And he was very vocal, very supportive of Ariel and we. How do you understand his uh, silence? He's a coward. It's as simple as that. He's, he's a coward. I worked for him, he was my boss, we're colleagues. And if he can't impose what he wants on people, he can't accomplish anything. And that's all he does. You see his Twitter. I urge, I encourage, we're, we're horrified. He never partners with people. He only bullies people. He's a coward and he's a bully. And he won't address this because it's his fault. He made the mistake. He stood by Henri this long. And at some point, I hope the Haitian people take him to court to tell you the truth. Yeah, so, so the State Department is uh, trying to send some signals to Ariel and we uh, many times. And they said, like last time I had uh, uh, so, uh, a statement from them, they said 32 months in power is without any election. It's too much. And Ariel and we went to CARICOM. Uh, he announced that they're going, they're going to to try the election in uh, August next year. And it seems like that's what pissed off people because not only the international community did not agree on, yeah, they did not agree on that with him. He, do you think Ariel and we, given how he was empowered by the international community, he was overconfident of what oh, uh, the support- 100%. They gave? He was never going to hold elections in August of 25, just like he was never going to sit down with Montana and the rest of the opposition and find a, a consensus government, which he refused to do, just like he was never going to do anything for the, the people of Haiti. So, yes, completely overconfident. But like I said, now he's desperate. Because he's going to face justice in the Moise assassination. So, so as you explained why, uh, before earlier, you said you would talk to the gang members. What what would you tell them? What would you promise? I, to what them? do they want? I mean, for the international community, the most critical thing right now is to understand what the Haitians want. Okay, so I need to know what the gangs want. I need to know what the elite want. I need to know what the oligarchs want. And most importantly, we need to know what the people want. And if you get there, you'll have the foundation you need to move forward. If not, if it's just some other puppet that's that's appointed by the U.S. because it's easy and they need a partner then it'll fail. Haiti needs to understand, and the U.S. needs to understand even more, that the most important thing in Haiti right now is not that they have a partner for the U.S. That really is not important at all. The most important thing in Haiti right now is they have some leadership to come together and unite the country. And once that happens, they can tell the U.S., this is the, we're the folks you're dealing with. And then you have a chance for some success. But, 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 uh, uh, why, Ambassador Food, do you think the U.S. is so obsessed of having a partner in Haiti? What, what, what do they want? That's just how they roll. That's, I can't answer that. Having worked for the government for 25 years, we're, I've told you this before, we're terrified of a non-democratic transition of power unless we're the ones pulling the strings as the United States. So they think, wrongly so, that if Ariel's not in charge, somebody's got to be in charge. Well, Ariel hasn't been in charge for the last two and a half years, as you know, and he hasn't done anything. So the situation hasn't changed. 
very much, except for the gangs are clearly in charge now. And I think the international community would be wise to have four to eight weeks of patience and empower the people on the ground in Haiti and provide security and whatever else if, if they need that to get together and have a national dialogue, which will then inform the international. So, so we heard there are some uh, some people that were in jail, some prisoners that they were under the control of the FBI, the uh, DEA for drugs, and the international, the United States is not happy at all that all of these people are in the loose and it might represent a transnational problem for them if they can go to Jamaica, Colombia and start doing drugs and all of these things. Do you think that might have played a role in the, the way the international community is dealing with Harry Henry right now? I hope so. Uh, so that's the, the key issue now, I think. You hit the nail on the head. This has changed from gangs and thugs in Haiti to transnational organized crime is now a player in this. The, some of these drug cartels have recently taken over the immigration routes into the United States as a source of revenue. So they clearly want to keep Haiti unstable so that people continue to migrate. And so there are bigger players in action now. And that's why I tell everybody, why do we care about Haiti? It's a national security issue. And with the cartels now making money off the backs of the Haitian gangs, that's not good for people. And, and, and there is also the fact some of the guy implicated, uh, alleged, <laughs> alleged implicated in Jovenel Moïse assassination, uh, a lot of them were uh, at the Penitentiary National when they right. talked about Dimitri Gerard. Dimitri Gerard yeah. is out. I think the only one that's still in there are the Colombianos, the Colombians, and Badio, because they're terrified. But who's who's taking care of them? Who's protecting them? I, I mean, I think if somebody wanted to go in and take the Colombians, they probably could. But no, it's yeah, terrible. But, but uh, uh, do you think the... Uh, Haiti, do we have a problem? The Asian, the Asian police struggle to, you know, bring about security in Haiti. But how come it was so easy? The gang announced they are going to break the, um, uh, you know, the jail, and they did exactly. They did exactly how they announced they were going to do it, and they announced it most day before, and nothing have been done. So it's kind of like hard to believe it's the government can be so cynical to live live in the loose like so many criminal gang members people up the police has done a lot to put behind the bar and then now they are so how do you what is your understanding of that so that's going to complicate the situation because you have almost four thousand guys who have been in the penitentiary and other correctional facilities and while all of them aren't hardened criminals, as you know, a huge percentage of people in the penitentiary were there on pretrial detention. Just the fact that they've survived in that penitentiary have made them tough, hardened guys who are now on the streets of Port-au-Prince. Easy for the gangs to recruit, easy for the cartels to recruit. Uh, so that's a complicating factor. There's no question. The Haitian police went from 2012 as a fully capable, not the greatest in the world, but a fully capable national police force of 15,000 people until Martelli started politicizing it. And then under Martelli, Moise, and now Henri, the police have completely failed and needs to be rebuilt. But the police didn't fail because of the police. The police failed because of the crappy Haitian. So, so uh, at this point, we're getting the gang members. Do you think we might need some solution to the way, like one that did, uh, some people, like criminal, who did not go to jail? So there was some kind of amnesty. People like come to peace, like someone like barbecue, or the gang members who know they are kidnappers. But to to solve the problem, so they might have to do some kind of concession and say, okay, we understand you did this or that, and now 
that's in your era and uh, we might give you a chance uh, providing you you stop doing what you are doing right now. Do you think we might uh, need a scenario like that? Yeah, I mean, I think as we spoke, as we mentioned, a national dialogue. And, and look, it's not going to be public, I don't think. And, and most people don't want to be seen talking to the gangs, but it's necessary. Um, I think it's critical that that happens. And until we know what they want and what everybody wants, we really can't say what the right path forward is. But I believe that Haitians are going to demand some accountability for the violence and the the terrible days of gangs being the overlord in in Port-au-Prince. But I also believe that in the interest of national healing, that everybody's willing to make some compromise. Guys like Barbecue and the leaders of these gangs, they got to pay somehow. And I, and the Haitians need to decide. I don't know if it's life in prison or if you give them less time, if they agree or whatever. And amnesty is a tool that can work. But I believe that Haitians are going to not want full amnesty. They're going to ask for some accountability of the leaders of the gangs and then a demobilization program to get the weapons out of the hands of the soldiers in the gangs and get them in a position where there's something else they can do with their lives. So, so which which of the international uh, partner you think might be in good faith? Do you, uh, do you see the UN, like if the UN sent a special envoy to be a mediator or, you know, uh, CARICOM, it seems like CARICOM now, He's not playing. I like he's singing the same song as the U.S. No, I think Caricom is is finally aware of the Haitian song, and they, be, you know, your brethren in the Caribbean are finally like, you know, these guys are right. They they can't. We can't just keep imposing people on them because it does not work. So, so in this case, I'm going to let you go because I know the Al Jazeera is waiting for you. And today you were very solicited. I was, everyone is waking up right now looking for them for what did you say? And uh, I, I'm going to let you go. But do you think this move now complicate the situation for Kenya to send the troop in Haiti right now? 100%. First of all, I don't believe the agreement that Ariel signed with the government of Kenya is legal anyways because of Kenyan judicial issues, but I'm not a lawyer. But Ariel's, like I said, unless something happens and things change markedly, Ariel's not in charge anymore. So guess what? His agreement doesn't hold. His agreement was for Kenya to come in and make sure he can stay in power. That's not what Haiti is. Well, at least for the agreement to work, Ariel and we should be able to go to Haiti right now. If you sign an agreement, then you cannot even go to your own country. Right. So why should... Right. And that shows you how illegitimate he is because he goes to sign an agreement to protect his citizens and his citizens won't let him in the agreement back in the country. So he's failed miserably. I hope he realizes it. And if he's smart, he will find exile somewhere he'll face justice for whatever his role might have been in the Moise case or the follow-up and he'll stay alive if but, but some to... people say they are the worry he might have now is that he didn't have a chance to go to his house to take some some of the docu- right, good important good. document he might good. have absolutely good frankly somebody i i I would be over there rifling through the stuff right now if I was an investigator in Haiti. I'm not, but and, no. No, and it I seems like that's probably some... why he's so worried about it because I'm sure he has cash and he has other stuff that he shouldn't have, and we'll find out. But it seems like there are some uh, some member of the judicial police like trying to protect his house, like uh, from some evidence they might have, and uh, the judge will put the. Uh, uh, you know, they release the document like to to charge some of the people and then decide not to charge him. So he might have to revise the document because like everybody know he might have some kind of involvement, at least one way or the other. It, we, we don't say he was involved 100%, but he might know something that 
he have something to say. obstructed justice in the wake of the assassination. That much is certain. And we'll see if he played a role in the real assassination. Um, so you you think there is some good chance that he might be uh, held accountable in the U.S. like in in front of a court charging the it, U.S. It, will ta it would take a long time, and right now he's not under indictment because the U.S. has purposely not looked into him because they don't want to know if he was involved. Uh, and I think anything would would happen with the. The, the Haitians starting any process, but uh, he's in trouble. So, so say that now, I ask you this question many times, the U.S. Uh, State Department called you, say, we realize you are the only one right about what we think about Haiti right now. And it seems like uh, or every live we have done that people say the only person the only people they person they they trust about this the only white person they trust is you so would you be willing to say okay uh, are you going to serve in any special uh you know capacity to at least help solving the problem if the state department that the biden administration call you ask you for help if i were going to help the haitians stand up a sovereign government and move forward, I would do it. But not at working for the U.S. because I believe that they would not let me do what's right for Haiti. So if an international organization or somebody else did it, sure, I want Haiti to get better. Now, the U.S. say, whatever you decide, we will agree on. And it. Uh, you got free, we don't give sure, you... Sure, if they say whatever I decide, fine, but they don't ever. And they think I'm nuts. Then uh, what would be your final, uh, you know, say about the situation in Haiti? What, what, what is your, what do you think? How do you think the situation will unfold in the next couple of days? Hopefully, the people in Haiti, the the current leaders, are talking to each other and have a plan to talk and move towards some kind of dialogue and talk to the international community with a. Uh, a united front and hopefully that happens to the international community i would say let the haitians tell us how we're going to proceed in haiti once they do that you can support that and you can move towards uh fixing haiti and moving it in the right direction if we don't get it right up front it won't work so so do you think someone like patrick gaspar or the uh like a uh, member of the Biden administration or former, since they have some kind of fashion origin, they might be able to help because it seems like oh, Patrick because Gaspard, Gaspard, Gaspard backed Henri. He went down there and met Henri and he never did the right thing with Henri. So. But he said yeah. that Henri was involved in the, in the Jovenel Moise assassination. He finally understood that he, he was playing the game for the US. Right. So so you have, do you see him like some kind of mediator or other people. I don't because honestly, I don't think Haitians should tr trust him because I don't trust him. And I started out liking him and working with him. And he lied to me a number of times. So for me, he has no credibility. If he has credibility with the Haitian people, great. I don't think the Asian people know much about him that they know about you because he's not very outspoken. Uh, then thank you so much, Ambassador Foot. It was a great pleasure to have you, and hopefully we're going to have you back and as the situation unfolds and the things will change. Thank you so much. It was a good pleasure to have you. My pleasure, and I'll be... My, my thoughts and prayers are with the people on the island and, and hoping that things will work in a positive direction. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Manuel. Voilà, c'était ambassadeur Daniel Foot avec nous. Nous tapé fonti parler avec lui sur uh, situation pays d'Haïti aujourd'hui. Hein? J'en note dit déjà Daniel Foot. Lui c'est peut-être et seul uh, membre de la communauté internationale là, qui a gain raison sur et Haïti puisque c'est depuis en 2001 donc il a démission pour être capable de protester contre et ça États-Unis donc lui même il a fait comme en Haïti it uh, seems like uh, Mr. Foot has. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you can go. So I think we're good. Merci. Now. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. So, uh,
Daniel Foot, donc j'en ai déjà, nous te font parler ensemble avec lui, malheureusement, et c'est en anglais, donc et nous, et bon, heureusement, pile dans mon qui est avec nous, il comprend. Mais nous, lui-même, les fait connaître, donc les États-Unis pas capable de gagner en quelle implication dans et, et solution qui gagne et n'a pas cherché Haïti à jeudi, hein. C'est Haïtien pour continuer qui doit chercher solution pour continuer. Si États-Unis venu, il y a pas échoué. Donc, les pensées, faut nous gagner un leader charismatique, on sort un leader sérieux qui émerge là, je dis, hein, pour capable de commencer et, et penser avec et adresser et problème non et les parois en fait les ouais grand pile l'idée Haïti nous avons demandé le bout de citer non puisque c'est pas responsabilité quand même et il va taper donc approprié pour nous faire ça mais les pensées gagnent en en discussion t'as supposé fait notamment ça avec Danio pour t'arriver essayer ouais si on était capable de jouer en sorte de et solution et puis parler ensemble avec l'idée politique yo et puis gagner yo même donc gagner et quand même yo gagné pour taper en prix mais uh, quand même yo capable de faire une charge qui plus ou moins et allégé mais les pas pensé haïtien prêt jodi an pour yo accepter donc après toute et atrocité donc e, gang yo fin fait tout les actes de blousaire donc pour ta quitter bandi yo aller et comme ça jodi elle même les dit les prêt pour lui et capable servir pour l'aider non et mesure les capable si haïtien ta besoin pour ta servir comme médiateur mais les pas pour le servir pour États-Unis parce qu'elle pas quoi donc États-Unis et gagner à quelle sorte de crédibilité elle pas quoi il a bon uh, intérêt et haïtien tout faut que nous dit Daniel Fout lui-même il était démissionné ça gagné et plusieurs années donc côté il était il était il t'a dénoncé qui gens États-Unis donc eux même il a maltraité et Haïti qui gens il a et et en fait pas ouais il a pas dans intérêt les et e, population et haïtienne là et je dis à penser c'est haïtien seulement seulement haïtien qui pour décider prend destin en main pas quitter États-Unis imposé yo en ken en ken moun car comme li impliqué nan négociation yo te gen discussion que te fait jodi an nan l'ONU et gagné et parler que te fait tout nan niveau département d'état jodi an et demain et ap gen l'autre rencontre k'ap fait encore nous même n'ap gagné un représentant et carré comme demain matin pour nous faire une émission avec lui alors on parlait avec lui on avait essayé traduit et interview ça de telle sorte que et plus monde capable et comprendre ni et que possible donc c'est ce zoom l'a fait nous ba au même rendez-vous en demain si je voulais venir on a fait une interview en demain aux environs de en 9h ou 10h et puis nous pour essayer traduire pour qu'à mettre le disponible pour et tout le monde de telle sorte qu'il est capable de comprendre qui j'ai en négociation et en fait dans niveau Haïti. Nous t'as supposé gagner tout d'ici lundi. Lyon et donc représentant Haïti non et représentant Canada alors dans l'ONU et Bob Ray, nous t'ai fait déjà plusieurs et interviews ensemble avec lui. Merci tout le monde qui était là et ensemble avec nous Oswald Neptune donc qui t'a regardé ensemble avec nous en Fenelon Jean Pierre en fait Nelson Jean-Pierre qui était là Rose uh, Stéphane et Audibert et merci en pile et puis Jude et Trasilien donc et Claude Emmanuel Smith Jean merci en pile tout le monde Martha Brunach donc tout le monde ça qui est toujours là ensemble avec nous mais toujours dit nous moi et respecter nous venir garder avec moi nous pas gagner une grosse plateforme mais nous nous gagner c'est des monde qui quand même et avisé et il y a beaucoup de dans ça dans plusieurs live n'a fait donc il y a et participer ensemble avec nous il y a pour tes corrections pour nous tous les ça nécessaire moi vraiment et apprécier ça nous content merci un peu l'hiver et Genelus nous content pour nous être avec vous et je dis hein pour nous être capable d'essayer pour te et donc et tu interviews ça va où puisque c'était nécessaire pour nous te gagner et Daniel Fout avec nous puisque c'est lui-même qui t'a commencé le mouvement ça ouais là qui t'a commencé première dénonciation Ariel Henry un peu le monde pas de prendre au sérieux parce que vous pensez et donc il était un problème personnel avec Ariel Henry mais au final donc tout le monde commence à balayer raison et je dis hein, c'est presque six ou sept médias internationaux Al Jazeera BBC et NPR et donc qui t'appris les donc et Daniel Fout pour être capable avec lui donc il fait nos plaisirs je dis hein comme il était 
nous avons commencé avec lui, donc lui est prêt à nous parler avec nous. Et tout de suite après, là, nous avons une interview ensemble avec Al Jazeera pour nous parler avec lui. Merci tout le monde, c'est un plaisir pour nous te Nous content et nous avons rendez-vous peut-être à soir ou bien demain. Depuis qu'il y a une évolution dans la situation, une information nous connaît, nous pas venir faire bruit, venir raconter, causer, donc nous pas gagner une preuve. D'ailleurs, sous question, on te demande de voir, il a démissionné à moi-même. Personnellement, j'ai plusieurs emails donc et avec des monde parler dans niveau communauté internationale qui était vrai ben moi même juste pas trop capable corroborer assez parce que moi même préféré perdre un scoop tant moi obligé à pe, donc faire mon yo courir ben mon yo faux espoir ou bien ben mauvaise nouvelle donc et n'a continuer suivre pour vous et puis tant et depuis qu'il y a possibilité pour nous capable intervenir, n'a pas venu et puis aider à comprendre, chercher l'autre leader bas ou pas oublier de mes idées les venir garder, n'a pas gagné, y ont représentant et Caricom qui pourra l'expliquer nous et négociation au euh, niveau Caricom et ça eux même y ont et souhaité et semaine prochaine n'a pas gagné représentant Canada dans l'ONU, nous gagnons tout en interview en planification ensemble avec représentant en États-Unis dans l'ONU donc Linda Thomas Greenfield nous espérer yo kembe promesse yo ba nou l'interview ça donc n'a pas tel pour merci en pile tout le monde c'est ton plaisir donc à la prochaine